by the time you have a lot of Hong Kong Chinese coming, they're yeah. coming city to city often. That's right. They're moving That's from right. Hong Kong. They, they've spent a lot of time. They're sophisticated, yes. urban. Yes. Um, you know, moving and, to Vancouver and, and Toronto. And actually, so, they changed yeah. Vancouver and Toronto. Yeah. Oh, we did. We did. You yeah, know, we, we did. did. We yeah. changed we it. Yeah. I mean, it's so totally different now. We actually have made probably Vancouver too, I, I'm sure Vancouver too, uh, also Toronto, yeah. into, a, um, I would say, a cosmopolis, uh, not just a metropolis, yeah. because we have made it into a, a very worldly city. Whereas before, it was Toronto the good, uh, everything closed on Sunday because of the Lord's Day yeah, Act, yeah, 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 yeah. And, and, you know, or restaurants or bars anyway close at nine o'clock on sunday all that stuff the things have changed and i think for the better yeah it's because of the the influx of immigrants and i would say the hong kong chinese have the greatest influence at that at that moment from the 80s yeah and of course now is there's a, a shift again but at that moment, it actually changed the major cities in, in Canada. We're standing here in front of yeah. HSBC, which is one of the main banks of Hong Kong. And yes. it obviously was, uh, you know, there was a And Shanghai as well. Shanghai, Hong yes. Kong Shanghai <laughs> Bank. And, yes. Um, so, you know, tell us about uh, your own family's connections to HSBC and, and you know, As far as I know, it was my father who had very strong connection with them because they had already done business with my grandfather. And when my father died, uh, my grandfather died, um, my father, well, it was according to the uh, death duties in Hong Kong, which was very, very high, uh, he needed instant cash to pay for death duty and uh, so he went to Hong Kong Shanghai Bank to get the loans and the relationship have, had been solidified ever since. <laughs> through the back yeah, door, exactly. right? I remember that, yeah. yeah. <laughs> you tell people when they asked you about possibly coming to Canada? What were the things that you said to them as, as the, the, the reasons why it was a great place to be? You know, um, so thinking back to, if ever, I don't know if anybody ever asked you your advice about coming to Canada, but what kinds of things would you have told, told them? <laughs> Uh, well, <laughs> um, I, was, um, I was only seven years of age. <laughs> and um, acceptance is most important. Acceptance and support as a new immigrant or a new newcomer mm -hmm. is important. There, you establish confidence right away. If you're not accepted and you don't have support, you do not have confidence and it will show in everything you do. You feel intimidated. I did never felt intimidated, so I went ahead and do the, did the things I wanted to. Uh, in fact, uh, this is getting off the topic, but I did uh, win the public speaking contest at Rotary Club in, in, in school. I was the president of the Students' Council in grade eight, and then on and on, the, the confidence developed. So, in retrospect, if I had something to say to someone, Canada is a wonderful place. Come over, and I have good advice for you how you should behave yourself, particularly now, since there is a acceptance and there's no problem with uh, joining the community as long as you learn the language well, learn to communicate well, and work towards the betterment of your own society, your own job, your peers, your confreres, and for the sake of the stability and well-being of the country, you've got it made. 
Thank you. That's that's good advice. And yes. uh, how about you? You 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 also okay. had lots of people coming that knew you knew before from Hong Kong. And you know what what kinds of things did you talk to them about in in terms well, of Canada? Well, if I'm asked yeah. whether they should come to Canada, I would say anything is possible in Canada. But you have to work hard. You have to work at it. And for new immigrants, first thing, you learn, as Neville said, language, you learn to make friends. You volunteer in the community. Because that's how you make friends. That's the easiest way of making friends. Mm -hmm. And keep your minds open. And a lot of this, I actually speak to parents about it. And I have often been asked by Chinese newspapers to advise new immigrants. I said, you have to make friends. Open your homes. Invite others in. They will invite you. Share your food. Share your festivals. And then you're part of the community. And, uh, and, and that's extremely, extremely important. Then, of course, Working hard is, is a very big part of it. But to be successful in a country, you have to be part of that country. And uh, uh, Canadian society has to be accepting. And it's very important for immigrants to integrate into the society. And at the same time, you integrate, but don't lose your own culture or your language. I am very insistent on that because if we bring our language and our culture to Canada, Canada is that much richer as a country. In 2007 you actually presented a speech at the University of New Brunswick about creating intercultural dialogue through education and you cited the Honorable David Lamb regarding uh, multiculturalism as a topic and in your view has how far Cities changed. I mean, has, are, have there been challenges and, and to the social cohesion, or do you see, uh, you know, what, what's your opinion about how things have changed over the last 30, 40 years? Really, since in fact David Lamb became, you know, uh, the Canadian governor of BC, and, and a lot of the uh, cities, Vancouver, Toronto, Montreal, have been changed by uh, Chinese as well as other immigrants. I mean, what do you see as some of the changes and challenges and 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 maybe positive and negative. Well, I think David Lamb was really a first for Chinese Canadians. Uh, I, I would say before him, there were those who fought for family reunification, which was equally important, but he was from Hong Kong. He represented um, the best of the Hong Kong people because of the way he behaved, the way he acted, and the, the, his belief in giving back. Now, um, it didn't surprise me because I came from a family like that, and you know my family did that in Hong Kong. So to me, he was typical Hong Kong Chinese, you know, the, the best of the Hong Kong Chinese. And I would say that, yes, a lot have changed over the, the last 30, 40 years. Um, uh, in the area of philanthropy, yes, I'm sure you see a lot in Vancouver. In Toronto, we see a lot too. It, um, I think the, uh, the, the it, and it's very, very typical. Um, Hong Kong Chinese, because uh, companies do not give, they don't have philanthropic sections of public companies, but people give personally. And I am seeing the same thing in Canada, whereas you will see Canadian companies having a section, like the various banks, they will have a part of their, you know, their, their foundation or whatever that would be giving to the community. For Chinese, it's a carry on from everything that had happened in Hong Kong and we still do the same thing, uh, you know, in, in the major cities. And I think as far as education, we have improved, but not enough. I would like to see a lot more improvement with curriculum for the uh, next generation. I have to say that I never say no 
when the schools asked me to speak. And I have spoken to little ones all the way to postgraduate or to seniors. I would always have this message that, you know, this is the world here and we must all live together, learn to live together happily and build this country, which is extremely, extremely important. And um, uh, I just want to mention that recently we were, we were in Scandinavia and we were changing plane in Copenhagen. Someone lining up with us who is, um, who is Dutch and he said he just came in from Toronto. And he said, you know, you have so many people from all over the world living in Toronto. I'm really surprised you don't have a lot of policemen on the street. To me, that's a very important point. It's a positive for Canada that we don't need a police state just to keep everybody in check. And I think that's that is, well, you know, as Hong Kong Chinese, we've helped towards that too. This I think is important because a lot of Canadians didn't r understand who these people were, were that were coming in the 80s and yes. 90s and why it was that they wouldn't accept second class citizenship, so to speak. Yeah. And, yes. and you, you've touched upon what was it in their experience in Hong Kong that led them to already be ready and, and willing to, to, to put yes. up a little bit of a fight. So, well, not only yeah, that, yeah. it's the education. Yeah. These are the very well educated class coming mm -hmm. in and no nonsense, mm -hmm. right? You won't accept it. Mm -hmm. And um, we can go somewhere else. If you don't want us, we go somewhere else. And it's not like the laborers who came in the, in the 19th century. Mm -hmm. They needed to come here mm -hmm. to be laborers and make a living. Mm -hmm. These people could go anywhere in the world. Mm -hmm. And so there's a very big difference. I have found huge change in Canada, well, particularly, say, Toronto, Vancouver, even Montreal. Montreal, less to a lesser extent. We, well, I lived in, in Montreal for eight years, my first eight years in Canada, and then afterwards we moved to Toronto. I really, really noticed the huge change in the 80s. Uh, in the 50s, the 60s, when we moved to, um, uh, moved to Toronto, really the prof our Chinese friends were mainly professionals. But then in the 70s, some of my old school friends moved to Canada. By the 80s, some of my relatives moved to Canada. I was the very first person in my family, both sides, my mother's side and my father's side, to come to Canada. So I was really the only one. And, and so by the 80s, things have really changed. Um, I find that Toronto and Vancouver too have become what I call cosmopolis because we've become very cosmopolitan. It's open up to the world, whereas before it was very provincial Canadian cities. And I really believe it's for the better, for the better for all Canadians. That it is the way it is now. And of course, we, you know, food and, and shopping, shopping, you know, on Sundays. And, and there are places that are open for Siu Ye until four or five o'clock in the morning. I think it's great. It's great not only for Hong Kong Chinese, it's for all Canadians, it's great. Thank you. Just as sitting, I'll say cheers and thanks everyone for Oh, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Cheers, 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 cheers. 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 This is not a typical gang lunch, even though those of us who are in the gang. Mm. And I was just thinking, Vivian, I think you've been to a couple of our gang lunches through yes. the years. Um, when Dr. Bam was around, when Uncle David invited, it, it was one or two. I think you joined us for going. You invited us with yeah. David Bam yeah. at one time, but I think it wasn't arranged by uh, David Lamb, but David yeah, Choi. Did. Yeah. <laughs> did we have a mural with David Lamb as material? Yeah, that's, that's right. 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 That's right.
I don't know. Yeah, when you that. mentioned it, I, yeah. I remember that. But you remember that? Yeah. Yeah, but before mentioning it, I, I couldn't Could remember be. which restaurant. Yeah, yeah, it was in Philadelphia. Uh. <laughs> A couple of things. Um, I've, I've been re recently. I've been thinking a little bit. What does it mean to be Canadian? I mean, uh, what does it mean to be? Where is Canada's place in the world? And whenever I'm in Ottawa, you know, sitting in committees, um, uh, let's say for scholarship, we think about why would anybody want to apply to come to Canada? In the recent um, um, Global Mail, there's a whole section on culture, and I found it. Reading through that section actually very interesting. Different people interview, and I think one of the people interview and it was a, a filmmaker from India. She, her name is I can't remember what it is, but she said one thing that I thought was extremely interesting. She said, "In Canada, we have stories in India that we can tell in Canada with freedom because we have the freedom to tell that story." And then, and then I remember other people said to me that you know. Canada is seen by the rest of the world as a place where people of very great diversity can live in relative harmony, right? So freedom to tell stories. I mean, human being, of course, we all want to tell stories, but sometimes you can't tell your story in the country where you're living in. When you come to Canada, you can tell the story. So it just occurred to me that, you know, being Canadian is a place where we can share each other and and you know, empathize, and live, and understand everybody's story, from no matter where you come from. Yeah. And I think this is yeah. actually yeah. very interesting. Was, was it Victor? Was that deep in Meta? Yeah. Meta. Yeah. Meta. Yeah. Meta, yeah. Meta, yeah. yeah. And you know, this is sharing uh, uh, sharing the, the mosaic is very important because I had the privilege of uh, being. Uh, uh, the president, if you call it, or citizenship but judge in quotation marks, to welcome new Canadians and swear, take the oath, and so forth. Oh, yes. And right then and there, we usually bring through, uh, in the morning and afternoon, each group, about 80 or more uh, different ethnic groups, a uh, nationality of people who came to Canada to be immigrants. Mm -hmm. And at that point, we make sure they turn to the left and to the right and get, shake hands, converse because this is a mosaic you're facing. We are so, and the multiplicity of different peoples, and it's important now to start right at this point, new Canadians, and carrying that on as you lead your daily lives. So I think that's a good way of getting people going, isn't it? Yeah. The, the, the pot is right there yeah. when they come in, yeah. and they will continue on. Mm -hmm. yeah. No. Yeah. Yeah. Canada, in my opinion, uh, is more like it's more a concept than a nation. It is a, a, a way of life. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And it is easy for people, especially for people from Hong Kong, yeah. to fit into it. If you have more or less the same values, you fit right into it, no matter where you are from. And it's, I don't know, I don't know. Um, whether it's, I can say that for the whole of Canada, but generally you feel you can fit in. And that's why when the Hong Kong, when Hong Kong people came to Canada, mm. and I was one of them, it was extremely easy for us to fit in. There was no real barrier to cross. Hong Kong people, therefore, had the confidence to jump right into Canadian life, mm. into Canadian business. They don't have to learn or to go timidly. Mm. They could jump right into it. And in fact, for Hong Kong, uh, which was a very small place, Canada offered huge opportunities on a much wider scale. And that's why people uh, from Hong Kong came here, and they went into all kinds of, 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 of uh, professions or, or projects. The timing was right. The timing, the timing was, was right, Hong Kong people came and we areas. brought the, yeah. the, um, the spirit of Hong Kong yeah. to, to Canada at a time when that spirit was really, in my opinion, The, the best kind of human spirit you can come across. 
I think one of the, 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 Peter, you, you agree with everything you've said. That this, this comes from the, the acceptance, the acceptance of, of Chinese, acceptance of people from Hong Kong. I mean, we are totally accepted. We're supported when we bring our, our, our heritage, our, our special um, um, uh, endowments, uh, our, 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 um, everything that we can do for Canada is accepted, the opportunities are there, and we're supported. And I think it's just wonderful, it's a great time. Now, I want to bring up a very interesting thing. Have you seen the Globe and Mail this morning with regard to our embassies being twinned with British? A comment was made, and you talked about nationhood, which should be identity. The one person said, the former ambassador, <coughs> um, I haven't read it yet. Yeah, for, former ambassador to one of the country, uh, other countries said that we Our are... Our ambassador, yeah, Canadian ambassador. Yes, to another country, okay. said that we are possibly in danger of losing our identity yeah. by diluting ourselves, enjoying ourselves with colonial Britain again by having these embassies joined globally. Yeah. And he has something that we talked about this, you know, colonialism, and we're now getting back to mother England again. Well, I think we are already too tightly knit with the U.S. I mean, we, you know, everybody thinks that we're American except when you wave a Canadian flag. Even the Americans think we are I, I know, I know. They know where we are now, at least. Well, uh, uh, not necessarily. Not, uh, not necessarily. But, you know, I think it's uh, very, very important that Canada stands on its own. Very important. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, because we get, you know, totally swallowed up by U.S., and now we want to be part of the Commonwealth again? <laughs> I don't agree. It's interesting. I mean, I, I, I'm, I'm sitting this and I'm, I'm a historian, so I remember the moment when I was finishing um, at UBC, and I was going on the way to law school, actually, and... Um, what happened? But it's a very, you know, exactly. I was a, any, are there any lawyers here? You know, yeah. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. You, know, you can think of it as a good thing or a bad thing that I, uh, I, I lost my way. But, but what it was was I, I was up for a, um, I was nominated to for the Rhodes Scholarship. I, ne I never got it. But, but there was this interview process, and it was actually your father, David Lamb, who was. Um, at one of the choosers, and so, uh, so yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> so he quite rightly didn't give it to me. Yeah, 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 exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah I'll go it. Yeah, yeah, it was only one. But no, it was very interesting because there was a, there was this whole process by which you you went to dinner and there was this the, the dreaded cocktail hour where where you and the people who were selecting you all had to make small talk around, and it was very colonial. Was, you know, this was like Cecil Rhodes of, of Rhodesia. You know, was a, you know, it was, it was in you know a club at atmosphere and you were all dressed up and it was very sort of formal and yet supposedly casual and I remember walking in there and I was the only Chinese I thought and then I saw you know Lieutenant Governor David Lamb and I thought okay well I'm not the only non-white person in this room but it was very interesting because I felt very uncomfortable and then he came over and we started to chat and he immediately put me to ease and then he asked me a question he said you know multiculturalism you know what, what do you think it means in BC, and I was like, "Oh, the test is started, right?" Yeah, exactly. Like, According to how I answer, it will be whether I uh, whether, whether I move forward. Clearly, I didn't give a, I didn't give a very an good answer. I think I said, "You know, it's about tolerance for different cultures." And, and I remember he, he said, "No, no, no, no. I, I think I think you're wrong about tolerance. You know, tolerance means you just put up with people, yeah, right?" Yeah, he and he said he hated it. And I, he said, "You know, we need to learn how to celebrate." each other's differences. We need to be here together and be happy, not just put up with, oh, I, you know, I'm not going to criticize you because I'm going to tolerate you, but I think you're doing this wrong. I mean, this was about, okay, let's, let's actually embrace each other. And, and I, I remember that was the right answer. So probably, you know, at that moment, I, I, it was no, 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 it was no, all, no, all he, chances see, gone. He, <laughs> see, he preferred the potluck, so he yeah. probably didn't like that atmosphere either. He, oh, yeah, yeah, he yeah, preferred yeah. everyone bringing their best, best to a potluck, potluck yeah. and celebrating. That's right. That's a yes. great idea. It, you see, they should change it. I was now, I, I was last asked last year to be on the selection committee. I'll say next year, make it a potluck. Forget this little you know, <laughs> cocktail party, because that was the colonial you know, legacy, this sort of very stuffy, you're in the club now. I mean, here we are in the Vancouver club, and we're in the club, right? You know, I, mean, I mean, it's one of those places that, yeah. Exactly. <laughs> so so it's, it means something to be here. Henry, do you know that they're trying to get Rhodes Scholars from China? 
from China, no longer yeah. part of the Commonwealth. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Very yeah. interesting. Yeah, 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 yeah. So it's not just about the empire and no, bringing no. people in from the outskirts of empire, yeah. And I think a lot of, because we're a culture that is probably more reticent and not as maybe in your face, it's good for us to, to be encouraged to tell our stories because I think naturally we're not going to normally be so self-promoting. So Yes, yeah. that's yeah. our characteristic. Yeah. <laughs> that's well, I think that's why it's so important yeah. to, you know, to talk about the story of David Lamb because yes. he, he was you know, a lieutenant governor, the first Chinese Canadian yes. to be in that kind of position. Um, but in many ways, I think so much of what he did may have occurred in, you know, smaller meetings and over lunches and, and you know, we risk that kind of story being forgotten, how important his role was and how, you know, in particular areas he was so crucial in, in making the, yeah. the place that we live in now. So I think that's, you know, that's why I think it's great to have this kind of gathering to know our... And, and I think when David Lamb was in office, he was probably the most traveled lieutenant governor. Yes. Yeah, he had so many uh, demands on his schedule and requests, and he made special effort. Yeah. Yeah. One particularly that touched me was that he went to Northern BC mm -hmm. because the, um, they wanted the Lieutenant Governor to speak at an elementary school in a very remote town. And how they did it was that the students, each student sent a letter each day. <laughs> Until he came. <laughs> wow. And when David Lamb arrived, he said, well, you guys wanted the left Handed governor, right? I'm here. I'm actually right handed. <laughs> I think he enjoyed the uh, visiting actually the small villages and the small towns and the schools and talking to the young people. That's probably one of some of his highlights for really. yeah. yeah. It just sounds like he got more letters and better known to young people than Santa Claus. Yeah. <laughs> well, I was just saying earlier to yeah. Victor that, you yeah. know, uh, he was at a Costco years later. Yeah. This I'm just talking about a few years ago, where the pharmacist had said, I remember you. You yeah. came to my school and you spoke. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. You know, that was very yeah. Yeah. Yes. He always had this very special way of um, reaching out and connecting to people. Yeah. You know, and Victor Ling and I talked about, he's one of the few people that we know who feel equally comfortable talking to queens and kings mm -hmm. and yet are equally and at senators, ease. And senators, and senators. senators. yeah. <laughs> and, and, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But he touched common people very special. And he's always, I remember he encouraged me, is that, well, everybody wants to do the big projects. Mm -hmm. You know what we should do? We should get everybody in their own way mm -hmm. to somehow help people in small ways mm -hmm. because that's how society becomes better. Mm -hmm. so, so I have to do that as well and you guys all should do that, you know, and, 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 and think about that, you know, so just, just do it. Small things, just do it. So.